If you want to edit a single layer in Photoshop, there's two easy ways to do it, and I'm going to explain them right now. Now, for example, I have this project going on here, and I have a ton of layers, but I just want to edit this knight standing here in the foreground. But the problem is, when I go and add a curves adjustment, for example, I could increase the midtones like so, but my entire image becomes brighter. And that's because when you add any layer, it's going to sit above all of the layers below it in your project. So if I move this curves adjustment layer below the night, it will now not affect the night, but affect everything behind that layer. So when you want to just edit a single layer at a time, you need to use something called clipping masks or smart objects. Now clipping masks are really great for just a few adjustments at a time, but when you have a ton of them, it really fills up your layers panel and just takes up a lot of space. So smart objects can be a better option when you have a ton of adjustments applied to a single layer. So I'm gonna show you both of those right now. But before we get into anything else, you need to first hit that like button down below as it's crucial for the next steps in this video. So let's first talk about clipping masks. In this case, with the curves adjustment layer that we've already used to brighten our image, to add a clipping mask, you have one of two options. The first option is to click this little icon right here at the bottom of the property properties window. And this is available anytime you create an adjustment layer. So by clicking that, it will clip your adjustment layer to the layer directly below it in the layers panel, as you can see here. Once a clipping mask is active, you can see this little arrow here, meaning that this layer is only applied to the layer directly below it, meaning the layer that it is clipped to. So now when I go and adjust this curves adjustment, only the night will be affected by these adjustments and nothing else in my image because this curves adjustment layer is clipped to the layer below it, which is the standing night in this case. Now, the second way to add a clipping mask is to hold alt or option and then just hover right between the two layers in your layers panel. And notice how my cursor turns into this little square with a arrow. Now, if I click, that's going to clip those two layers together, clipping my curves adjustment to the standing night below it. And now you can adjust that single layer by itself. Now you can actually stack clipping masks together. So for example, if I wanted to add a color balance adjustment, I can clip this to my curves adjustment layer and make some adjustments like so. And notice how it's only affecting my night because it kind of works in a chain reaction. Since my color balance is clipped to my curves, which is clipped to my standing night, they all end up going to the standing night. Hopefully that made sense. Now what's important to remember is clipping masks don't need to be used with just adjustment layers. They can be used with any layers you want. Now, for example, in this other project I have here, I have a piece of text and an image above it. Now, if I hold alter option and click between the two layers here, now I've clipped my image to my text, meaning that it is only applied or it's only visible within my text layer. So I've essentially added an image to my text with the help of a clipping mask. So clipping mask can be used for any type of adjustment that you want to only affect a single layer, whether that be text, adjustment layers, colors, whatever you wanna do. Now, with all this in mind, if you have a ton of clipping masks, it starts to take up a lot of space in your layers panel, which isn't always ideal. So that brings us into the second option for editing individual layers, which is using smart objects. Now, a smart object is like a container that holds a bunch of layers. So when you open the container, you just see all the layers inside of it. Let me show you what I mean here. Deleting these old adjustment layers, I'm going to first convert my layer into a smart object. I can do that by right clicking on my layer and going to convert to smart object. Your layer will then have this little icon here, which is the smart object icon. And now when you double click on the layer thumbnail, your layer will open up in a separate tab here with all of your adjustments applied to that specific layer. So let's go and add a curves adjustment. I'll brighten that up a bit and then I'll do some color balance quickly just for the sake of example, and then maybe add just a bit of contrast here just for very drastic measures. Now, as you see, we didn't have to add any clipping masks because there's only one layer within this smart object that can be edited at the moment. So since all of these adjustments are within our smart object, we don't have to add a clipping mask. We don't have to worry about it. Now to apply these changes into our original project, we can just press Command or Control S to save our smart object. And now when we go back to our Dragon Castle project tab here, notice how all of those adjustments are applied onto the night, except 
there's no adjustment layers visible in our layers panel. Instead, we just have our smart object making everything a lot more streamlined. But if I want to access my adjustments later on at any time, I can just double click on that smart object. It opens up that tab again. And then here we are with all of our adjustments that we can edit freely, which will then update back in our original project. So using smart objects is really useful, especially when you're adding a lot of adjustment layers onto a single layer. However, clipping masks are probably better if you're wanting to restrict something into another layer, like an image into text or a gradient into a shape, for example. With those types of things, a clipping mask would be better. Whereas when you're using adjustment layers, smart objects are often the better way to go. So I hope with those tips, you're now able to edit individual layers like an absolute boss in Photoshop. And if you enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing because we love to talk about Photoshop around here and I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.